Judge Bernard Shaw, once commented that America and Britain are two countries divided by a common language. It's true, we do seem to speak the same language. So why do we misunderstand each other so often? The Brits understand soccer and Americans know what trousers are, but other vocabulary differences cause problems. One British charity worker offended her Texan hosts by saying, I could murder a fag! In British slang, she really wanted a cigarette. To the Texans, it sounded as if she wanted to kill a gay person. If an American explains, Nice pants! A Brits will think he is admiring their underpants rather than their trousers. A Brit asking to borrow a rubber will cause astonishment in the United States, where rubbers are condoms, not erasers. When my American teacher declared, I'm totally pissed, she meant she was angry. I thought she was drunk. Returning to Heathrow after a year in the States, I followed the subway signs, which led under the road and back up to the pavement. I went under that road four times before remembering that it was the underground I needed. Britons get disorientated and reacclimatized. Americans disoriented and reacclimated. Brits beat someone up. Americans beat up on someone. A mad American is angry. A mad Brit is a lunatic. When an American asks for the bathroom in England, they will show him a room with a bath. He should instead ask for the loo or lavatory, or look for signs for gents, ladies, cloakroom, or public convenience. The Brits will also be confused if he asks for the restroom. Some differences date back to the early American settlers. The British biscuits derive from French. American cookies from the Dutch of New Amsterdam, now New York. The Pilgrim Fathers used existing words to denote new things. Corn for maize instead of wheat. Lumber for logs instead of disused furniture. They also made new compounds like bullfrog and borrowed from native Indian languages to name raccoons and persimmons. Even for native speakers, it's a shock to encounter incomprehensible accents. Californians visiting Glasgow and Londoners listening to Mississippi Blues are equally mystified. For learners, it's even tougher. According to interpreter and novelist Diego Morani, anyone who studies English today must resign themselves to this. A more helpful goal is to understand and speak standard BBC English. Familiarity will do the rest. Even the most awkward Texan accent becomes identifiable with practice. The vowels cause most difficulties. As the song says, You say tomato, I say tomato. Americans say either, Brits say either. Sinatra sings about New York. Brits call it New York. Americans shorten the vowel in dance to dance and lengthen the O in God to God. As for consonants, Americans roll the T in fighter and rider. They pronounce the R in car and card. In the Queen's English, it's car and card. There are, of course, exceptions. This divergent pronunciation has its origins in the regional accents of the British Isles. The first American colonists sailed from the southwest of England. Millions more came from Ireland. So it's no surprise that the Cornish and the Irish pronounce car and guard, rather like Americans. Stress often changes, especially in words with foreign origins. Brits say garage, ballet, and cafe, while Americans insist on garage, ballet, and cafe. Some words change spelling and pronunciation. British defense, D-E-F-E-N-C-E, -E -E, becomes defense, D-E-F-E-N-S-E. -E. Aluminium, A-L-U-M-I-N-I-U-M, -I -I becomes aluminum, A-L-U-M-I-N-U-M. -I -I -M. Most people imagine these spelling differences developed over the centuries. 
wrong. American spelling derives almost entirely from Noah Webster's 1828 dictionary. A vigorous reformer, Webster wanted to bring spelling closer to Latin and to spoken English. He took the U out of color, odor, and honor. He moved the R in center and meter. He took the E out of judgment, simplified jewelry, J-E-W-E-L-L-E-R-Y, to J-E-W-E-L-R-Y, and removed an L from woolen, cancelled, and traveling. He changed check, C-H-E-Q-U-E, to C-H-E-C-K, jail, G-A-O-L, to J-A-I-L, and sulfur, S-U-L-P-H-U-R, to S-U-L-F-U-R. And he substituted Z, or Z, for S in words like realize, standardized, and civilization. There are innumerable differences of idiom. At American junctions, you must yield. On British roads, you give way. In the New York subway, they warn you to watch your step. On the London tube, to mind the gap. The British study the American War of Independence. In the U.S., it's celebrated as the Revolutionary War. The terms liberal, conservative, and republican have such complex meanings in both countries, you need a history degree in order to understand them. Consequently, native speakers who work both sides of the herring pond or pond, i.e. on either side of the Atlantic, have to be flexible, sensitive to their audience, and ready to learn. English, as we've seen again and again, has no indisputable dictionary or authoritative academy. A British lexicographer, Ernest Gowers, considered British usage definitive, as English originated there. American journalist H.L. Mencken disagreed. When two-thirds of the people who use a language call it a freight train instead of a goods train, they are right. The first is correct usage, and the second a dialect. So we remain divided by our common language. American editions of Harry Potter had to change football to soccer and video recorder to VCR. Meanwhile, Scottish band Franz Ferdinand couldn't communicate in California, as this brief dialogue shows. Drummer Paul Thompson. Can I have the bill, please? Los Angeles waitress. What? Can I pay? You want a canopy? <sighs> okay, a canopy and the bill. When you look at the text, you will find words that are in blue. The blue words are intended to be new vocabulary that you will learn. When I click on it, it displays the word plus the Spanish equivalent. I will pronounce the English for those words. Soccer. Trousers. Hosts. This is the plural form of the word host. Underpants. Even though this is a plural word, this is the way we indicate the singular item, underpants. <coughs> Condom. Here we have the singular plural word condoms, the singular word condom. Eraser. Here we have the plural word erasers and the singular word eraser. Back up to the pavement. Lunatic. Date back. To date. Is the infinitive form to date back to C 
settlers. We have the plural form here and the singular form settler in the glossary. Pilgrim fathers. Fathers is the plural form of the word father. Logs is the plural form. The singular form is log. Bullfrog. Compounds. The plural form compounds, singular form compound. Raccoons. The plural form raccoons, the singular form raccoon. Persimmons. The plural form persimmons, the singular form persimmon. Mystified. Even tougher. A more helpful goal. Awkward. Vowels, the plural form, vowel, the singular form. Sailed, past tense of to sail, sail. The Cornish. Stress. Junctions. Junctions is the plural form. Junction is the singular form. Yield. Yield and give way uh, means the same thing. But yield is used most commonly in America, give way most commonly used in the U.S., in Britain. Mind the gap. Mind is a word meaning be aware, look, mirror. Here is the gap. Mind means to be aware of the gap. This is commonly used in Britain. Pond. Herring pond. Sensitive. Freight train. Freight train is commonly used in the U.S. A goods train is commonly used in Britain. They mean the same thing. Bill. Waitress. And finally, size. Size is the plural, sigh or to sigh is the singular form.